Hey guys, welcome back to the 13th episode of Let's Play Space Engineers as a German Engineer. Thank you for tuning in today again, and I have like a special episode today for you guys, um, because today we will not be spending a lot of time building things, and we won't be doing a lot of time lapses and other stuff. What we will be doing today is we're going to be programming. So I'm super excited for this. Uh, specifically, if you want to look here at our to-do list, what we have on our to-do list here is build inventory LCD panel. And I want to get to that and start working on this. And I, th I think we can get something done this episode. So um, uh, yeah, let's get right to it. So the first thing that we need to do to be able to do any amount of programming is we need to enable scripting uh, because right now in this world, scripting is, is not enabled yet. So the way that we do it is we save our current game and we exit out into the main menu. And here, typically you would click on continue game, but if you want to change the game settings, and we, we did this before in a previous episode, that we click on load game. Uh, last time we did this, we activated, uh, we added some mods, but this time we want to change some other settings. So we go to, we select the, the save game, and we go to edit settings. And then we click on advanced over here, and scroll down, and there's a little button here that says in-game scripts and this one we want to activate so activate this toggle and then click ok and then click ok again and now the settings for the save game have been changed and now scripts are active so now if we click on load we will be able to to edit scripts okay we're back in the game uh and nothing really has changed and that's exactly what we expected so the next part that we need to edit some scripts is a programmable block. Um, and let's just, uh, I actually already have my bar down here. What a coincidence. I wonder what that is. <laughs> um, let's just uh, put some more blocks down here. Let's expand this out a little bit. Okay. And uh, let's quickly weld this up as well. Come on. There you go. Of course, I don't have enough steel plate for this. So, to, to talk a little bit quickly about what we actually want to do is... I would love to have a screen that displays um, what's in my inventory. Uh, and when I say my inventory, I mean my basis inventory. Across all the different cargo containers and assemblers and, and whatever. Um, so that I can always easily and quickly kind of at a glance see like what's going on uh, in terms of re resources that we have stored away. Okay, so here's the programmable block. There's like a terminal here um, that we will need to operate. And I'm just putting it here now for now for, for ease of use. Um, it's a little... A little dark out here, so maybe we should also... Uh, actually, let's put a block... Oh! We quickly need some more steel plates? What? No. Oh, wow. Do we use all our steel plate to build these couple of... <clears throat> to build up these couple of blocks? So we're just gonna put these here for now. Um, and uh, the reason I want to put them there is I want to... Install some lights. Can we? No. Why can't we? Because we don't have any construction components. Okay, I also... The problem is I also want to um, put a, a display on one of these. So... Um... Let's do this differently. Let's grab a display quickly. It's called panel, not display, right? Yeah. Um, this one, I think, is the right one. Okay. Let's see here. Text panel. 
and then we flip it the other way. That's a deep panel, I think. Maybe what we want. Okay. Interior plate. Wow. Okay, we need all the different resources here. Let's get this together quickly. What's going on here? Interior plate. Okay. There we go. I'll hold that up. Okay, of course, we're missing some more components. One is empty. Really? What's going on? I'm confused. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we have a display. And we have a programmable programmable block. Um <clears throat> first we need to what we want to do is here on for content we'll send this to text and images on the display or in L C D panel. And we will also give this a different name. We'll call it inventory. LCD panel. And then our programmable block. So, there's a couple of options that you have in the pro programmable block. Um, the most important is the content uh, section down here. So, you can choose between no content, text and images, and script. And text and images is where what we're using for or panel, LCD panel over here for the to-do list, or you can just write stuff to it. Um, and that's cool. Uh, and there is also a script section here. And there's a bunch of scripts uh, underneath that you can, that are kind of predefined that you can choose from. And I assume that if you use scripts from Workshop that they also show up here, but I actually have never used any Workshop scripts yet, so I'm not sure about this. But, um, and all of this is actually available even if you have scripting turned off in your world, if I'm not mistaken. However, what uh, turning scripting on does for us is it gives us this section down here, um, which allows us to write our own script um, to control the programmable block. And the way to do this is we just click the edit button here, and it pulls up this editor. Um, so <clears throat> it's important to understand that I'm not going to be uh, introducing you to uh, uh, this is not a programming course. Um, if you are completely unfamiliar with how programming works and you cannot follow what I'm doing here, then uh, it, I would recommend going uh, uh, seeking out some some C sharp tutorials. Um, and I'm saying C sharp because this is actually the programming language that that Space Engineers uses for its scripting. Um, uh, I'll I'll touch on a couple things a little bit. So like even if you're not familiar with programming, I hope you won't be lost. But if if so, then uh, I highly recommend doing like a beginner tutorial, a beginner programming course for C sharp. Um, yeah. The other thing that will be a little bit different today um, is so actually before we go there, the other thing is typically. Typically, when you're programming, you would be working in what is called an IDE, uh, an Integrated Development Environment. Um, uh, that's kind of like a program that provides you tools and help and some guardrails and kind of like guide rails um, uh, while you're programming um, and kind of simplifies and speeds up the process significantly. Um, and for this initial experience here, uh, I will not be using an IDE. I will be actually programming directly here in the in-game editor. Um, the main reason for this is I think most people that get into this for the first time, they will probably, that's what they will be doing. Um, if you're not a programmer, if you're not into this kind of stuff already, then you might not even know what an IDE is, let alone have one installed. And so, um, uh, and then also, it requires a, a bun uh, some amount of setup to kind of like connect your IDE to the to the Space Engineers game, um, and so we'll skip over all of that. I think that complicates things, and we will uh, do the program directly here um, uh, for season 
programmers among you guys, um, this might be a little bit painful because this is a very simple text editor that doesn't provide very much or any um, help at all. Uh, and that might slow down the process a little bit and will be more subject to, to making mistakes and errors. But um, for now, I think this is the kind of the, the smoother uh, entry experience for most people. So that's what it is. And then also, most of the time when you see these videos of mine, you will just be seeing the Space Engineers uh, game footage. But because we will be doing a bunch of programming and I'm a, not super familiar with all of the things that we're doing here, I will have to seek out a lot of help myself. And so I will be regularly tabbing out into this browser window here. I've uh, pulled the browser up. Uh, I've already pulled up um, the uh, in API overview of the Space Engineers API that we will be able to to consult for uh, method names and 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 kind of like how to program against it. Uh, but we will also be googling and searching for for help and support um, uh, how to do certain things otherwise just uh, in this browser. So so um, yeah, just uh, be prepared for that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, any good programming experience starts with a simple program. Um, and typically, that is the so-called Hello World program. And that's exactly what we're going to do today as well. So, let's pull up our programmable, programmable block again. Click on Edit. We have like three major sections here. So, there's this public program section here. Then there's the public void save section here. And then down here is the public void main section here. Uh, each one of these is a method defined on a class that you can't really see in this editor. There's, you can imagine, you could imagine like if you're an experienced programmer, there's actually a class definition surrounding this. Um, this is the, the body of the class definition. Um, but uh, basically what these three sections, oh, and then within these sections, we have these, this text and this text is special because it starts with these two forward slashes and that indicates that this is a comment um, and basically tells the 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 script interpreter or the comp the compiler that actually runs the code that this is meant for humans and it should just ignore it um, so you can use these to add documentation and comments to your code to make it to explain what you're doing to explain what the technical um, commands that you're writing what what they're supposed to do in more human terms and uh, it's useful for if you go back to your code later and you're trying to understand what you uh what you meant uh, what you were trying to do these comments can be useful so in this case they are pre-filled already and explain what each of these three sections do and to summarize it very quickly the public program section up here the program section here uh is called only once every session so whenever you start the game this section gets executed um, or when you load your, your world. The save method is only executed when it, the, the game state is saved, so when you hit the save button or when you leave the game. Um, and then the last one is executed whenever the script is invoked, uh, meaning when the, the run action of the programmable block is executed. Um, so for now, we don't need the first two, um, but I, I don't want to really remove them because I don't, think we will need them but maybe eventually we will need them so I'll, I'll just leave them there uh, but I'll move the the main section um, that we will be mostly working in I'll move that up so that we have it up here and I'm gonna remove the the comments uh, because we don't really need them anymore okay so how do we write a hello world program. So what is a Hello World program? A Hello World program is a simple program that does nothing else other than printing Hello World to the to the output. Um, and we should find out how to do this. So what we need to do is I put up this uh, LCD panel over here already. So what I want to do is I want to write Hello World to this LCD panel using a program. Um, pretty simple and straightforward, but that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Pretty simple and straightforward. So um, I've played around with this a little bit already, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't. Um, so what we need to figure out is like, how do we write to a, an LCD screen in Space Engineers? And for that, I'm going to pull up the browser here and I'm 
gonna Google for how to write to an LCD in Space Engineers. And we might need to add, um, yeah, this looks good. Writing to LCD panels on the programmable block. Okay, here's a bunch of text down here. Uh, a bunch of code, but there's actually none of this is really useful. Um, yes, this is t technically correct, but um, it's not quite what we're looking for. This link was already clicked on. I think that's where I found it last time when I was looking for it, is my guess. Yeah. This here is exactly what we need. Um, so I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it in here. And then we will format a little bit. Okay. So. Uh, let's quickly walk through this and adjust it so it will actually work. Because right now, it will not. Um, <clears throat> var console... Var is a keyword in the programming language defining a variable. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any experience with programming, you should understand what that means. Console is the variable name. And then we assign uh, the result of this function call. The function call is grid terminal system get block with name. Grid terminal system is generally the, the, the major object that allows you to access the current grid's um, terminal system, meaning... Um, uh, kind of talk to all the blocks that are connected to the grid. Um, and specifically, we say get block with name, so meaning we, we query the terminal system or the, the, the currently uh, uh, attached grid, uh, the grid that we are attached to or that the terminal, the programmable block is attached to, we're querying it for a block with a given name, and the name is wide LCD panel. And this is already where we need to make some changes because that's not actually the name of our console um, that, we want to, that we want to target. Instead, um, let's uh, put a variable here. Console name. Our console, what did we call it? I think we called it inventory LCD panel. Something like that. Uh, and we're, we're creating a new variable up here so to make it easier in the future um, to actually change it uh, without having to scour through the entire, through the entire code. Um, oh, yeah, that's one thing already that this editor is not doing as well as a code editor. If I do control shift to kind of select the next word and press left, most programming editors would consider this, uh, what's it called? The ticks, um, quotation marks, that's the word, as a, a, a word separator. And this editor here does not, as you can see it, it, it selects the entire text, uh, like only white spaces are considered word separators. So uh, if that all just sounds like gibber gibberish, then excuse me. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is now instead of passing in a string here directly, and strings are things in quotation marks, it's text essentially in, a, in, in the program, um, we will pass in the variable name, console name. And then the as I my text panel is a cast. So I assume the grid terminal system get block with name returns some kind of more generic block type. Um, but we know that this will be an LCD panel uh, or a text panel. So we cast it to the I my text panel interface. In just to be uh, uh, transparent, I I know a little bit of C sharp, but not really. <laughs> I've I've programmed some C sharp in my past, but that's like. 10 years ago and um, uh, so I might be especially when it comes to copying or like lo looking up how to th do things I might do things incorrectly just because I'm not familiar with the programming language or not not as effectively as others would um, but yeah so so please uh, bear with me if you are a c-sharp expert um, but if so, and uh, do something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. I can always go and update the code and improve things. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, so one of the weird things, for example, about... I don't know if this is like a C-sharp thing or if this is like a space, a space engineers thing. All the interfaces and classes are named... Start with my. 
So it's not called I text panel or I space engineers text panel or I S E text panel or something like that. It's called I my text panel. Um, and that's true for all the, the classes and interfaces. So yeah, that's just what it is. Okay. So basically what this will do is will give us the inventory LCD panel grid block uh, in in the interface to that into in the console variable. Um, the next line checks if console is on e not equals null. What this means is um, so not equals that should be obvious. Uh, null is basically a programming way to say that it's nothing that it doesn't exist, right? So. Um, you can imagine that if we mistyped our console name up here or deleted the, the LCD, the inventory LCD panel block at some point later, like round it down, it would be gone. And then this call here would not find our block that we're looking for. And then the console, instead of having containing the block, um, it will contain this null value. So we want to make sure that we actually found the block basically with this expression here. And if we found the block, we will write text some words. In some words, is not actually uh, text. As I as mentioned earlier, text is always in parentheses like this, quotation marks. Uh, sorry, not parentheses, quotation marks. Um, and this is not in quotation marks. So this actually refers to a variable, and this variable doesn't exist. And I'm not going to bother to actually uh, create it because we'll, we, this is just for demonstration purposes, this part here, and we, we will not be changing the specific text later. So um, but what we want to do is write hello world to the screen. So that's what we're going to write. Hello world exclamation point. OK, so I think at this point, this should work. So there's a little button down here um, that says check code. And what it will do, it will check our code for errors and, and print them out. Basically, it, 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 it's, um, it's a syntax checker. Um, uh, or more precisely, it'll try to compile the code, and if it fails, it will print out the error codes of the of the code, but um, or the errors that it encountered. But let's let's do this. I think it should. Yeah, there we go. Compilation successful. So this is all working. So we can close this now, and let's see if it's actually working. So right now, if we look at our screen, um, we can see that there's nothing printed to to the screen, and the reason is, as we mentioned earlier. We go back to the code this section here the main section is only executed when the run action of the programmable block is executed so what we need to do is we need to execute the run action which is down here we can just click this run button here and it, as you can say the tooltip says run current script and notifies about any execution exception during run sorry okay so let's do that okay and now let's look aha look at this our panel updated and it says Hello world. So congratulations to our first successful script execution. I can tap myself on the shoulder here. <laughs> um, awesome. <clears throat> but the reality is this is neat and cute, but it's not really useful. So how do we make this useful? Well, let's think about this for a little bit. So if we want to, the goal here is to print out a list of all the items. So th the goal here is to give us an overview of what we have in our inventory. And <clears throat> let's take some comments here. Um, overview of items in inventory. So this means we will need to basically go over all the invent all the blocks in our in our base that have an inventory and find all the inventory items in those inventories and kind of like group them by um, by the item type and then summarize all over them, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, we need to, did I, um, sorry. Go over all grid blocks with inven, inven 
stories and well let's let's phrase this a little bit differently and this actually might be a better stepping stone as well what we need to do is we need to go over all containers go over all containers and summarize items so um however i also want to kind of already uh, preface a couple of things we might not be interested in actually knowing about all items what we're really interested in are the major raw components um and maybe uh, in ores, so like maybe steel plates um, and iron and stone and stuff like that, right? So that we have a a good idea of like how many of the base resources we have. We don't need to know exactly the amounts of like I don't know of um, uh, character tools or whatever, right? So so we do want to have some kind of like. Um, a filter where we can filter relevant items or items filter for relevant items um and then print list to screen last step like once we have a list of uh all the different items in all the different containers and have summed them up uh, by item type, obviously, um, and filtered out the ones that we actually want to, or like filtered out the ones that we don't want to display, then we need to print that list to the screen. Um, so I think <clears throat> where we should start is go over all containers and summarize items. Um, and specifically, we should start with go over all containers. So how do we do this? And this is a good question because we will need to figure this out. So let's go here again. Let's do a little bit of searching. Space engineers um, get all containers. Let's just do this here. Um, let's see what we found here. Inventory get item. I'm an inventory. Okay, this here looks interesting. I think. Um, so this generates a list of cargo containers, if I see this correctly. Right, so it goes to the grid terminal system, get blocks of type, I cargo container, and puts it in the cargo list. So let's let's try this. Um, let's just grab this, and this will give us a list of cargo containers. Hopefully, if it works, let's actually hit the check code button quickly. Yeah, so this works. So now we need to go over all of these containers. Uh, to go over things <laughs> in programming, um, you use a for loop or a loop in general, and specifically a for loop. There's different kinds of loops, but um, if you have a predefined amount of elements uh, and you want to touch every single element, like the for loop is the uh, most effective way. There might actually be some programming languages have other constructs um, uh, that make looping over iterables a little bit easier than this. I don't know if C Sharp has that. Doesn't matter. Um, we define a variable i for index and we initialize it with a value zero. So this is the in the initializer of the loop runs when the loop starts for the first time. Then we, we do you put uh, the next thing is the abort condition. So the abort condition here is or continuation condition actually is more correct. So as long as i is smaller than cargo's list dot. So now we need to figure out how many elements are in the list. And typically there's like um, something like um, a count or some other variable that identifies how many elements are in a, in this list. And I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So if we look here, list, items, new list, inventory, item, items, get yada, yada, yada. But this is the important part here. Items.count. 
So cargo list dot count should work. And the last thing is this the step command um, is the instruction that gets executed on every iteration of the list, which is uh, sorry of the loop, which is incrementing the counter or the index by one. And then we put the actual loop body. This is the actual part that gets that we want that we're doing the loop for. Um, let's put a comment here for now and do check code again. So just to be sure that we didn't mishap anything, we should do this regularly. Uh, since this editor is not really pointing out errors that we're doing, we need to hit this check code button re regularly so we don't accidentally do silly mistakes without noticing them. The next part here, um, okay, so what we now have here is a cargos list, which is a list of uh, cargo containers. And now we can index into this list using the i variable. So these square brackets are the element selector. Um, I'm not sure how C sharp calls them, but element selector or, or index selector. And so cargos list is a list of terminal blocks and you can access the first element of the list. No energy. Ironically, uh, because this is programming and in the programming everything starts with zero uh, with by putting a zero in the list. So this will give you the first element of the list. And if you put a one, it could give you the second element and two, the third, and so forth. Right? So so you can uh, select all you can go over all the different elements in this list this way. And so what we're doing here with the loop is we the first we're initializing the i with a zero and then incrementing it by one. This plus plus here just means increment by one. Um, so every iteration of the loop we will increment i by one. So the first time we 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 execute this code here, oh yeah, and this code block gets executed for every iteration of the loop. So the first time we come along here, this i will be zero. The second time we come along here, this i will be one, and so forth. Right. So we get the first element, the second element, the third element, and so forth. And this loop will stop executing once it reaches the end of the list. So if, let's say there's three elements in Cargo's list, we have three cargo containers in our base. The, the third one, uh, the, the time we reach, the time i reaches three. So like if i is zero, then it will be smaller than zero, uh, than three, right? So if i is one, it will be smaller than three. If i is two, it will be smaller than three. But if i turns to three, which would give you the fourth element here, which if you only have three cargo containers, won't exist. So in that case, three is no longer smaller than three, so the loop will stop executing and, and this part of the, the code here. Oh, sorry for that. That must have been jarring. Let me... Okay. This part of the code won't execute anymore, but instead, the code down here will continue executing. Post-loop, right? Um, yeah, let's... Let's add a little bit of documentation here. Um, loop over all containers. Oops. Get list of containers. Okay. So let's try to start simple. Um, we have a list of containers, and we go ev over every single container. I think what we want, what I would like to do is I want to verify that this is working. So let's um, use our console again. Um, if console is not not equals null, uh, then console dot write text. Oh yeah, one thing that is important: pay attention to capitalization because most programming languages, I think, all that I know of at least, um, care about capitalization. So if I wrote write text like this, it would not work. So pay attention. Um, this is particularly uh, tricky in C sharp because C sharp tends to capitalize its its names of things, its objects and classes and whatnot differently than most 
most modern programming languages. Yeah. Um, okay. Write text. So let's just write found cargo container. Let's start simple. Let's just do this. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add a comment here. And what, what, what this means, I'm commenting out this line. So we started writing some, some code here, but we're not done with this. And right now we don't really... If, if we just leave code here that is cluttering things up, uh, the, it, it, the the program might not work. So so we, we'll comment this out. We'll remove it basically from the execution. Um, and... And this should this should do this. Um, but it's adding this, this the common slashes here in the front will will do this. So this is the the compiler will ignore this code for execution. So now let's check code again. Okay, compilation successful. Actually, let's actually also for demonstration purposes. This might actually work because it might just be a, a statement that doesn't do anything, but it it might also just break things. Yeah. So program error semicolon expected because we yeah we don't actually have a semicolon here. So that's why that's why we add the comment. Okay, so let's look at this. So what we're doing now, we we'll, we we'll loop over the list of cargo containers, and for every one we write the text found cargo container to the LCD screen. Let's see if that works. We need to hit the run button again. No energy. Okay, so this is interesting, and actually, let's quickly let's just quickly charge up here again. Just to turn off the radar and open my helmet to hopefully maybe reduce energy usage. But okay, so there's two things I want to point out. First of all, our hello world text disappeared. Um, and then the other thing, there's only one. So it did print found cargo container, which is great, but it's only it only printed once. But the the fact that the um, hello world text disappeared it should indicate something to us, and that is that it appears like subsequent write lines or write text calls override what is already on the panel. And that's not exactly what we want, right? We don't want to... Like, when we write each line of items, we, we want this, the previous lines to remain there. We don't want to... Uh, like, we, if... I don't know how many cargo containers we have in the base, but it's, let's say we have three, for the sake of an example. We wanted to say found cargo container three times, right? Not just once. And so let, let's see if we can if we can fix this. Um, let's open the code up first. Okay. So let's see. So I'm going to go to the uh, Space Engineers SDK documentation here. Um, this is not an official one. I don't even know if there is an official one, but it, this has been pretty useful so far uh, and has everything, like you, all the different blocks in here. So you can just control find and then search for I, my. Um, and what we're looking for is the I, my text panel, because that is what we're using to write to the LCD panel, right? We do console write text and the console is an i my text panel that's what this cast here tells us so we're looking for i my text panel there we go here it is right so let's click on this and now what we want to find out if there is either a way to call write text um to append lines or if there may be uh, sorry not yeah, maybe there's an add text or a pen text method instead that we can call. So let's just look for the write text line first. Okay, and here we can all already see it. So bool write text string value, which is the actual text that we're writing. But then there's a second parameter that is optional, that is bool append. Uh, and this is probably what we want to use, right? So we go back here and now say instead found cargo container and then add second argument for a pen and set it to true. Let's check the code again. Yep. Okay. And then hit run. 
Aha. So, we can see the Hello World is back. And then we have found car container, found car, and then it truncates our text. Um, well, we don't want all of this in one line. We kind of want it in multiple lines, right? So, what we need to do is we need to add what is called a line break. So, in programming, like this write text does not implicitly add a line break. So, let's explicitly add a line break in the text that we're writing. Uh, and we do this with this little line break character. So, backslash n is what is called a line break escape character. Um, basically, what this means, hey, add a line break right here. So, we'll do the for the hello world, and we'll do the same thing down here for the cargo containers. Okay. Check code. Yep. Okay. Run. And close. There we go. So, this looks much better. So, we print hello world, and then font cargo container, font cargo container, and with a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cargo container. That's awesome. Nice. So, <clears throat> I think next, what I'd like to do is we could start uh, scouring these cargo containers for the inventory. Um, but I think it would be useful, um, for now at least, to instead of printing font cargo container, to actually print um, some specific information about the cargo container, like its name, so that we can actually correlate like what we found here um, with, with the things that are actually in our base. So, let's see. Let's pull up the code edit again. So we have I, my cow container um, in here. Like, each of these elements in the cargo list is an I, my cow container. And let's see if we can figure out if it has... if there's, like, a name or something on this interface. And I'm already suspecting that we might have to choose a more generic interface uh, like that this one inherits from or like at least look for the the name on that because cow container is already pretty specific so let's go back to the documentation here and uh, let's actually open this index in a separate tab so we don't have to navigate back and forth all the time uh, I I'm my cargo container okay open this in a new tab let's close this over here Let's close all of these. Um, so let's just look for name. Control F, name, name. Okay. Okay, okay, so we actually have a bunch of names here. Oh yeah, it says out here, inherited from my terminal block, my Q plug, and so forth. So custom name, custom name with fraction, definition display name text. So I... I don't really know what any of these are in detail, but I think display name sounds pretty good. Get user friendly name of entity. Maybe null for block terminal name use display name text. Maybe null for block terminal name use display text. Okay, I'm not quite sure what the second part means, but let's just try using display name. And if that doesn't work, then we will try using display name text as this here suggests. Okay, so display name. So in here, now, this com this um, let's use this, do this here. So what we're doing here is basically we're, we're taking the current element at position i out of the cargo's list and storing it in the container variable. That makes it just a little bit easier to, to work with. Um, so if console isn't null, then write text font cow container. So instead of writing font cow container, we now want to actually include the name of um, the name of the container. So container dot display name. So this should work, right? Like container is an I my cargo container. And I my cow container has the display name property. So yeah, let's check out. Error: the name container does not exist in the current context. Okay, now I'm a little bit confused. 
Lock container. Did I? Oh, I see. Container. A T is missing here. Okay, let's check code again. There we go. And then run. Okay, two things. Um, A, we removed the line breaks again. We need to react that again. But also, the display name doesn't seem to contain anything. It seems to be empty. Um, so maybe we, we should use the display name text, right? That's what it was. Display name text. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Name use display name text. So <clears throat> let's do, do both of these things. Display name text. And then add the line break beneath. By the way, I'm using these pluses here f for string concatenation. Um, so if you use a plus in programming between numbers, it adds them. But if you use plus between strings, between text, it will concatenate them. So kind of like stick them together. Check code. Yep, looks good. Run. Oh, sorry. There we go. Perfect. Found small cargo container. Found large cargo container. Found small cargo container too. <clears throat> Awesome. So, like, we, we indeed found all our cargo containers. That's awesome. Um, let's quickly look at cargo container. Did it list the uh, hauler cargo containers? Large cargo container, medium cargo container, small, small. I think it did, right? Yeah, hauler lot. Okay. So it lists all the car containers from connected blocks on, uh, from connected grids and, and from this grid. Um, that's awesome. However, there is a thing that we need to talk about now. <clears throat> and that is this iron here. And why I'm pointing out this iron? Because this is 26,000 iron. That's a significant amount of iron that is like we would want to be included in our inventory list. However... This is stored in the main assembler. And the main assembler is not a cargo container. And so it doesn't show up in our list. So how do we fix this? Before we before we try to fix this, let's just try to see what's in these containers that we have. So we're going to go back to the script. And then in our loop here, now, each of these cargo containers, we somehow should be able to get at what's contained within them, right? So uh, space engineers list items of list inventory, list inventory items, something like that. Um. Hmm. No. Iterate. I'm going to use iterate because using list um, gives too many non-relevant uh, results here that are not re related to scripting directly. Iterate inventory items. Okay, both of these two hits seem interesting. What do we have here? Um, <laughs> add item. This is all about oh, this count item. Um, yeah, block get inventory zero get items. Item list. Item list is my inventory item. Okay, let's. Grab this. Oh, by the way, we talked about this earlier, about an easier way to iterate over a list. Here it is for each. So maybe we'll go and uh, an update or loop here to, to use a for each instead. So first of all, we need to define this variable item list. So again, this is a list of my inventory items. Um, and then block get inventory Look at inventory zero, get inventory one. Inventory count larger than one. 
Interesting. Okay. So it seems like some blocks have more than one inventory. Let's uh, start with zero though. Um, sorry, is this? Yeah, this is misaligned. Um, get inventory, get items, item list. Um, this seems to be some kind of filter. Uh, over here. So I think we might be able to just remove this for now. And block or variable is not actually called block or variable is called container. So container, get inventory zero, get item list. Let's check code. Nice. Okay. So, so good so far. Uh, once we have an item list, we probably want to verify um, let's change the order here because what we're going to do is we're going to try to print how many items are in the in the inventory so instead of just adding the name here we will also add the number of items um, so we have item list and then we should just be able to do count again yeah i think so um but we also need a white space in here otherwise the number is gonna just be stuck there actually let's do let's do that in parentheses like this so the item the item list count will be in parentheses um check code okay uh so one thing that I can already, I'm almost certain about, or in fact, I know, but I would be almost certain about, this item list is a list of all the item types. So let's imagine you have 10,000 iron and five um, silicon in your inventory. This count here will not give you uh, 1,000 iron and 500 silicon. This item count list count will not give you 1500 what it will give you is two because it is iron and silicon and then on each of these items uh, in the item list the specific amount of that item is stored i'm almost certain about that or i i know it for a fact but i would be almost certain about it if i didn't know already so let's run the script and check it again. This looks good. Um, right, so we have small car container has 14 different items. Large car container has 10 different items. Small car container has two different items. And then each of these down here are empty. Um, let's verify this. Uh, let's see, like the small car container has 14. Small car container. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait, this is the large car container. Sorry. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the second row is 14. There we go. And actually, I'm, I will be willing to bet if we split one of these stacks here. Uh, let's say 100. Now it will show us 15. Um, okay, so the reason why it doesn't show us 15 is that we need to rerun the script, right? Because only when we run the script, it will actually print something. Yeah, there we go, 15, perfect. So that's awesome. Uh, that's exactly what we want or what we expected it to do. So let's keep going here. So now we can grab the inventory. But what is up with the get inventory zero, right? Um, as, if we look at the example code that we had here, it actually has this other block down here that says if block inventory count is larger than one. Um, and the reason for this is if we look at our containers, right? Like each of these containers only has a single inventory. But if you look at blocks like the assembler, as an example, this is assembler has two inventories. It's the input inventory 
and then there's the output inventory. So right now, which also reveals the other thing, right now we're not including our assemblers in in this list, right? There's only the cow containers. The reason for that is the reason for that is that here when we are retrieving the list of cow containers, we're explicitly asking for blocks of type I my cargo container. So what we really want is not all cargo containers, but all blocks with inventories. Because assemblers and connectors and, and, and drills and other things might contain um, might contain resources that we want to list on our terminal. So how do we get all blocks that have an inventory? Well, get inventory. I think this method here is interesting because it should only exist on on interfaces that contain an inventory. Does that make sense? So if we, let's check out the the iMyCow container interface. We'll go back to the documentation here. Uh, iMyCargo container, this is the right interface here. Right? So, get inventory. So, this here says iMyEntity has get inventory. Let's look at this. Um, I want to check something quickly because I have previously seen a I my inventory. Okay. <clears throat> this is interesting because I have previously seen a I am my inventory owner interface, which seemed to be the right interface. So we can definitely do the I my entity, but I'm pretty sure this will also give us invent uh, blocks that don't have an inventory. So we would need to filter those out. I my inventory owner. Let's quickly look at this because this does exist. Hmm. Does it say what it inherits from? It does not. Um, I'm gonna quickly I my entity see if there's any just any uh comments anywhere which should be used or not. I mean, the I my entity, we would probably have to use the has inventory, the SR has inventory method. My guess is not all I my entities have an inventory. I my in my inventory. Okay, let's just. I just want to try the using the I my inventory approach here. Uh, I my inventory owner approach here. As I my inventory owner. So we're casting the cargo container here. 
Um, because it's not really a cargo's list anymore, right? It's an inventory owner list now. Okay. And then here as well. And then here. Inventory owner. Yeah, using an IDE would be a little bit easier here. Um, then this container here needs to be renamed. What I'm doing right now is c called refactoring. It's basically if you just uh, moving things around and renaming things um, structurally. Check code. Oh no. Cargo's list does not exist in the current context. Cargo's list does not exist in the current context. Why are we still using Cargo's list? There's like 1758. Um, so line 17 here? Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Owner list. Check code again. Inventory owner does not exist in the current context. Line 20. It shows the lines down here, by the way. Inventory owner does not exist. Owner list. Owner list. Okay, let's try again. I, my inventory owner, does not contain a definition for display name text and no accessible extension method. Display name text is something in the first Okay. So, where does display name text come from? On the we had it on the cargo block, but I my inventory owner does not have this interface, and this is this, this interface doesn't actually inherit. Uh, it's not in the inheritance chain chain of the other ones. So, and if that doesn't, uh, if you're not a programmer, that probably doesn't tell you anything. But basically, uh, it's like me. We may not want to use I my inventory owner as the TLDR. Uh, display name text comes from I my cute block. Um, <laughs> and it implements I my entity. So, yeah, if we just use I my entity, it's not going to really help us. So instead. Let's just do on my cube block. On my inventory owner. Oh, I my cube block. Yeah, I think this will not work. Yeah. <laughs> so the problem here is is like a programming specific problem. Um, where the types of the different blocks, um, I need to juggle them a little bit, bit. So, what we can do here, what we probably need to do in the end is use I my entity, I my entity, and then. Call this entity here. Um, and then check for the inventory down here. I'm my entity. And actually, we do want, probably only want to have blocks with, with names. So...
Um, let's do it differently. The like var name uh, equals. Can we check entity entity is I my Q block? Does this work? Inventory owner does not exist. Inventory owner. We renamed it to block, didn't we? To entity. Just uh, keep this at the old name for now. Inventory owner. Um, yes. Inventory owner. Oh, it does not contain different participant name tags. Okay, so this here seems to be working. So. And I assume we also can do a ternary here. So if inventory owner is IMIQ block, then we can do inven in entity. We're gonna rename this now as uh, IMIQ block dot display name text. And otherwise, we'll call it unknown uh, no name. Let's uh, go and rename this to entity. 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 Now we put name here. So, right, we created this name variable up here. If the entity is IMIQ block, we will use the display name text, otherwise we'll use no name. <coughs> and check code. The name inventory owner does not exist in context. 925, so we missed one. 25 is here. Oh yeah, okay. This might actually throw an exception. Um, because what we not need to do is... is if entity dot has inventory uh the reason why I know this exists is because has inventory exists here um Know that one aggregate inventory can contain zero simple inventories. Zero will be returned even if get inventory not equal to null. I'm not sure I understand this. I don't know what an aggregate inventory is. <clears throat> but we'll just assume for now that this is not relevant. Oh, capitalization. So if it has an inventory, then we will get it. Get check code. My entity does not contain a different for house inventory. Really? Uh house inventory inherited from my inventory. Oh, it's not a method. I'm calling it it's actually a property. So house inventory. Like this. Hmm. Oh, there's a typo. Inventory. There you go. So I think this should work. Run. No exception. Interesting. Okay, okay. So now it obviously it finds and prints all the different entities, not just the ones that have an inventory. 
I, I did use the house inventory, but only to get the item list. So, if we want the right way to, if we only want to print the ones that have an inventory, oops, that's the wrong. What we need to do is, we need to move this line here, these lines here that actually print the text into the has inventory check. Right here. So, only if the, it has an inventory, it actually prints the Save, run again. There we go. Okay. So it found all the drills. Ejector conveyor sorter, ejector connector, basic assembler. Yeah, looks good. So let's check the basic assembler. It should have four items in it. Let's make sure that this is correct. One, two, three, four. So here's the thing, right? We are only accessing inventory zero right now. Um... Inventory, this is probably inventory one, and we're not accessing that. So, but that's fine. For now, that's fine. Ultimately, we, we do want to fix that, but... Yes. Um, just sorry, Siri, I was not talking to you. Um, so, I think... Next step should be... Let's actually look, print out the... The items in those inventories. So, let's pull up a list again. A code. And if we have an inventory, we get the items into the item list. So, now, remember the for each? Uh, where was that? It's somewhere in one of the examples. I think in this one, right? No? Oh, here, for each. Um, it's a cleaner way to loop over a list. Um, what we can do here is for each. I my terminal block. Or no, wait, I my. Inventory item. No, not. I just. Uh, my inventory item in item list, right? That's the for each my inventory item is the type, then the variable name, then in, and then the collection. Okay. So now we can do so let's move this here in front of this loop. And the main reason I still want to print the container name. Actually let's remove the found. Oh, come on. Let's remove the found. Just print the name first. Uh, let's rename this here as well contain to container name. Container name. Put a space here. And then let's make this look more like um, a title or something. And put another line break here. So, that, yeah. You'll see what this looks like. I think it'll make it a little bit more clean. Uh, for each item, my inventory item, item and item list. Now we can write console dot. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna do another thing here. Um, what I'm gonna do is. Since this entire thing is de dependent on console not being null. Um, I will just do if console equals null will not do anything. We'll just 
skip out. That should allow us to remove all these checks here. Because none of this code is really relevant if we can't find the console to print to. Let's check. Yeah, okay. This is because I'm not done here. Console.write text. And then we're going to write the item. We really want to write the item name. Um, but we don't really know what the right property is here, right? So let's look that up. So my inventory item is what we're dealing with. My inventory item. Here we go. Um, we have amount, item ID, and item type. So maybe it's on item type. Type of the my item type. Come on. This is uh, slow. I don't know. This wiki is not very efficient. <laughs> um, so here's some strings. Type ID, subtype ID. Uh, and I think that's it, what's on here in terms of... So let's check that out. So item uh, type, I think. And then... What? Type ID? Was that it? Type ID? And subtype ID. Let's just print both of them. Um, we'll do like a little separator. And then item dot type dot subtype ID. Uh, and then we also need to line break again. Check code. I missed the semicolon. There we go. Most programming languages require you to finish a statement with a semicolon, so that you guys are aware. Okay, that worked. I mean, it compiled. It also executed. Let's see here. Okay. Um, so, I added these lines here to separate, like, the containers from each other, right? Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay. So... A bunch of these were printed, but none of them, none of the ones that were printed actually contain anything. And it doesn't seem to be printing everything. And I don't know what the first one here is. My object builder ingot nickel. Oh, I see. Ah, okay. So the colon here gave it away. I think this is one of the items. Um, the subtype is nickel, and the main type is my object builder ingot. Um, and I think we, m the reason why everything, this is the only item that we see in this list is kind of like truncated, is because we didn't specify to append on that write text. So let's go back. Um, write text, comma true for append, right? And then also, I think this already kind of, we don't need the type ID, we need the subtype ID. Okay, let's check code. Right, because the my item builder ingot or whatever um, is probably not. Although, actually, I'm curious to see what the other item types are. Can we undo now? Still? No. Uh, so we're gonna re-add it again. <laughs> Item dot type dot type ID Check code, yep. Run. Okay, here we go. So the ingots, nickel, cobalt, iron, silicon, and then component or component. Yeah, so the reason why I re-added this, because it's actually, I think, the main stuff that we probably want to print on our dashboard are probably ingot and or. Um, ingots and or in the end. I don't know how much of the 
how interested we might be in the components. Also, I'm curious, do ingots and ore, do they share the subtime name? Uh, we don't have a lot of ore in here. Some ice, but that's about it. There's some stone. Okay, but yeah, this looks good. <clears throat> so. Now, since we have this, let's also print the amounts of each of them. Right, so. Um, type ID, subtype ID. Before we do the line break, we. Let's use the parentheses again. Actually, we need to do it over here. So probably use like a print f equivalent here instead of constructing my string easy uh, like this. I'm sure like if you're if you're a C sharp programmer, you you've been already yelling at your screen. <laughs> but um, I think this is easier to understand for now for for most people. So I'll stick with this for now. Um, the item amount. So we already, when we looked at this my item type, no, not at my item type, we were looking at now we need to navigate back and it's, it's really slow. At my item, I think. Uh, where is it? Oh, here. Yeah, amount. My fixed point. Okay. So, item dot amount. And then let's close the parentheses again. Actually, let's we can do this here, like this. Yeah. Okay. Check code. Awesome. Run. There you go. Nice. Yeah, that looks looks about right. Yeah, this is the iron that we split earlier. Okay. So, so far so good. But this obviously is not what we want, right? We don't want like this huge, huge list of empty containers and stuff like that. Actually, we're not. We might not be even interested at all, which containers contain the material, we just want to know that it's there. Um, but we also don't really care about like the number of stacks that we have in the different containers, right? So we don't want like want to know like, hey, we have five iron here and then we have 356 here and 100 there and then maybe another like 6,500 over here. We want this all to be summed up and printed out as one line. So how do we do that? Good that you asked. <laughs> um, what we need to do is, like, while we iterate over all of these things, all of these containers and their items, we need to store the number for each of the item types that we're interested in and store it away somewhere. And at, whenever we run into another one of those item types, and I think the right way to... might be... Actually, this is... An inter interesting question. Do they... Is iron ore also called iron? Um, hmm, I don't think I have any ores other than ice and stone right now. So... Okay. So we might need to sort them not only by subtype, but by type and subtype. But that is that is fine. Um, and so what we can do here, right, we can... What we can do here um, for each item, and we'll do var item identi identifier. And we'll do item.type.identifier. 
type ID and then we'll use the same colon approach again and do item dot type dot subtype ID and then we can replace this here oops item identifier but also we can use this now so this should this was just refactored right we replaced with a variable but now if we had something that we can kind of associate this item ident like all these these amounts with an item identifier then we could just add all up all these amounts and store it as the item identifier and then after we went over this whole list we go over the list of item identifiers again and just print those out with their stored amount and the kind of construct to use for something like that is what is called a dictionary or a map um so i'm not 100 sure what c sharp uh calls it c sharp oops c sharp map is that coffee yeah dictionaries maps and c sharp dictionary string string let's see if C sharp doesn't have built-in maps. Okay. But there's a dictionary, which is just as good. Um, so what a dictionary does, it takes one type and I mean here it uses the phone book as an example, right? Where probably the first thing is like a name and the second thing is like a phone number. Um, right? So it allows you to associate a name with a phone number for example, in this case, or one string with another string, or you can associate a string with a number. So you could say, I have a string and I want you to associate a number with that string. And when I ask you for that string, I want you to give me the number. And that's exactly what we need, right? So um, let's just go ahead and create a dictionary all the way up here. Dictionary a string which is the item identifier to a number item amount but that number was not just a number it was a my fixed point number so i assume that we need that that's probably a i guess some kind of special floating point number um, I hope it, it supports addition and stuff like that. We'll see. Um, and then inventory equals new dictionary dic 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 dictionary. How do you initialize that? New dictionary string string Okay. String my fixed point. There we go. Okay. Now we have an inventory dict. Um, and now we should be able to not only print this through the console, not only print it to the console, but also inventory dictionary dot okay um now i need to look up what the methods are um <laughs> okay i want some proper documentation for this uh, dictionary c sharp okay that looks like it let's keep this all the way up here Um, <laughs> so we have add, it appears like. Where's, yeah, methods, add. Try add. Try get value. Contains key, contains value. 
What is triad? Huh. Why would that fail? I guess if you run out of memory or something? Or we can also just access that. Okay. Okay. Then let's do this. Um. <clears throat> Item identifier. Sorry, that's wrong. What will it return if it's not set? He not found exception. Okay. So we can't. So we can assign to it, but we can't u use it. Um, we can't contain. We need to check for contain. So what we need to do here is, if inventory dictionary contains key item identifier. So actually what we need to do is, if it does not contain it, so we invert this logic, then we need to add it and initialize it to zero. So if we haven't seen the specific item yet, inventory dictionary item identifier equals zero. We need to add it. Because otherwise, what we're going to do here now is we're going to, uh, we're going to, Increment it. I'm actually not sure if this plus equals. Uh, let's let's just do it for the sake of simplicity. Inventor inventory dictionary. We're gonna try to read it here in item identifier. Item identifier. And then we're going to be adding the item amount to it. Um, and this might need to be cast as uh, as my fixed point. I don't know if that works. Okay. No. Item identifier does not exist. I did not capitalize it correctly. Check code. The as operator must be used with the reference type or nullable type. Okay, let's look up my fixed point. We may need to... Let's check if it can do additional stuff first. And then also... I mean, it has the methods. I don't know if C Sharp supports uh, overloading. Like operator overloading and if these are implemented um but i think there should be a constructor for it um hmm. i don't know maybe i'll just try Do new my fixed point. Um, maybe actually, maybe using zero will work. Yeah, so it's it's possible that the this addition here will will be fine. That it if it takes like adding a an integer to a my fixed point will automatically kind of deal with the casting and whatnot. So let's run it. Yeah, no exception, so that seems to be the case. Um, a lot of empty containers. We should probably s skip over those for the sake of simplicity. Okay. Um, so, nothing changed. And the reason for that is, is because we are still printing... We are still printing... The individual items in the containers. We're creating the dictionary, but we're not actually using it. So post loop 
Aha. Um, for each. Can I do for each with the dictionary in C sharp? C sharp dictionary for each. There we go. Yeah, for each key value pair, key value pair string my fixed what was it called? My fixed what? My fixed point. Um and then I, I, uh, yeah, item, I don't know, stuff, <laughs> whatever, as, no, not as, in, in, inventory, dict, let's call it inventory item, I guess, not just item. So now we can do console dot write text item dot key. I assume that this is what it is. Uh, key plus and put a semi uh, colon here plus item dot amount and that just give us the summed up oh, we need to do bool uh, true here we do want to append and actually do another right text up here that just says summary um and then, ah, uh, sorry. True for append, and we'll also put a, another line break up here. Another one down there. Check code, key value pair does not contain the definition of amount. All oh, right, because that should be value, not amount. Value. So each of the entries in this dictionary is a key, which is the identifier, and the value, which is our or sum of where where is it here? Here, the sum of item amounts. There we go. Okay. Um, we can close this. Did I hit the run button? I think I forgot to hit the run button. Run. Okay. So now at the very end of this list should be the summary. And there is a summary. But it's not exactly what we want. Um, so uh, just to be clear here, go back. I clearly did not use line breaks. Um, yeah, I did not use line breaks. Uh, edit. Wait, down here, down here. Yeah, item value. Plus, land break. Um, and another thing. Oh, here we go. Okay, There's a little bit of a lag spike there. Did I hit run? I don't think I did. Okay, check it again. What am I doing? Okay. Summary, my object, ingot nickel, ingot cobalt, iron. So we have 178,000 iron bars or ingots across everything. It's awesome. This is exactly what we want. Um, so there's, there's a... Let's go ahead and kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, first of all, we are going to be removing all the other print lines. 
uh, red lights that we no longer need. So, we don't need this here anymore. I'll just comment it out for now. Maybe we will. It might be useful later, so, for debugging purposes, um, if we ever need to come back and debug something. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, we don't need the Hello World anymore either. And I guess then we can also remove the line break here from the summary. Okay. Let's run. Wait. This did not. Okay, I'm confused. Why? Did I not save? Huh. Um. I'm confused. I. I Oh, I see. So what happens happened here is like I uncommented the I commented out the hello world and the hello world was actually the only call that wasn't appending stuff. So that where that had the append bool set to false. So now we're just continuously appending more stuff. So what we want to do here is the summary we want to set to false the append so to clear the display every time we run it and then append the, the other stuff behind there we go <clears throat> um so a couple more things i think uh the next thing that we want to make sure is that we don't actually want to print everything right we only want to print spe specific uh things um in particular, probably only ingots and ore. And I think we want to print ingots and ore together. So if we have a certain amount of... Um, when we print nickel, we want to print the amount of ingots and we want to print the amount of ore of, ing uh, of nickel. I'm just um, trying to think what the best way to do this is. So, like, one simple approach, how we can filter stuff, right, is we can just say, hey, we want... Um, material... Or item filter, maybe. I item filter. Um, and... We'll make this a list of strings, I think. A list string. New list string. Can I do this? Can I provide the list in line here? Let's see if this... Mm doesn't appear like it no no okay um let's see how can i see sharp initialize i guess we could use an array list yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. Okay. I see. So, oops. Yes, I, I do remote, want to remember changes. Um, so, it's, I'm going to do... It's going to look like this. Yes, okay. So, now we can say we want... 
Um, <clears throat> that's everyone. Nickel. And we want iron. And we want ore. Something like that. Well, then we can just go ahead here and say... Um... <clears throat> if... So this is we're looping here over all the items in the inventory. So and we want to be like, hey, if this if this specific item ID item identifier is not in our list, then we'll just ignore it. So if item identifier, uh, what do we have to kind of like check on lists here? Let's look here list. Um, methods contains, this, but contains will give us. I really want to look, um, kind of want to match, like, match against the string anywhere, really. I think so. Find predicate match. Hmm, maybe contains is the right one. Contains item. Uh, match, where was match? I'm blind. Oh no, wait, find, I see. Binary search. Exists. What is the difference to contains? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this is what I want. So the, the match predicate. I can probably... Find points. Where's this coming from? Oh, here. Oh, yeah, it's just a comparison function. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so I can probably add a minute dot exists. Wait, no, I need to do item filter. Is that what I called it? No. Yeah, item filter. Item filter dot exists. Um, and item, is that how you do a, hmm, anonymous function, like a lambda function, C sharp lambda, if you are uh, not programming, then you don't need to understand this, yeah, uh, exists, Item item dot contains I g that's my guess. No item identifier. Item identifier dot contains item. Uh let's go back to string here quickly. String uh, does it have contains? Probably something like that. Methods. Contains. That looks good. Okay. So. If it contains that. If it does not. If this does not exist. 
um, then we continue, which just means in this loop here, we'll go to the next step. Check code. A local apartment name item cannot be declared in the scope because that name is used in the enclosing loop. Okay. Um, yeah, I see. Uh, filtered item. Filtered item. Okay. Check code. Yeah. So now, what this does is... We define this list here of things that we want to include. And it will just check the item identifier here. If it c contains any of these strings. If it does, it includes it. If not, it does not include it. So, we'll run this. And, aha! So now... Remember, the, the list included ore, nickel, and iron. So we include all the nickel, all the iron, and all the identifiers that include ore. And since on the left side here, before the colon, this includes... There's ore here, there's ore here, and there's iron and nickel here. So all of these are included. Um, so I think what we want to do here is... Just write a list that contains, we'll probably just want to include ingots and ores, and then want to, yeah, no, I want to um, build a, iterate over all the different materials and create a list that then prints the amount of ore and the amount of ingots for the particular uh, material, and then just prints that out. Um, since that will require a bunch of like just writing code that is pretty straightforward, uh, I will probably just skip over that and go over the results with you guys once I'm done. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll get right to it and I'll get back to you once I'm done. See you in a couple minutes. So, uh, here's what we have so far. Um, mostly I spent just time on kind of like cleaning this up and organizing this a little bit better, better improving the formatting and, um, kind of creating some structures that allows me to more easily print ingots and ore for each of the different materials. Um, I'll go over it quickly with you guys in just a second, but yeah, so like for every... Uh, material that we filter for uh, we'll print a line that includes the number of ingots and the number of ore. Obviously for I think for stone and ice ingots doesn't make sense uh, but outside of that um, for every single other item we print the number of ingots as well as 
um, the amount of ore that we have. We also apply a little bit of formatting, like K stands for thousands. We also have millions and billions, um, just in case we ever get that much material. <laughs> uh, so we have a thousand silver, uh, 178,000 iron, 41,000 silicon. I just now noticed they all print a zero here. Pretty sure that's wrong. I might have to double check that but um, and fix that potentially. But um, yeah, so the uh, only thing that's still needed to do, um, I'll walk you through the, the changes uh, in just a second, but the only thing that's still needed to do is right now this display only updates when the script is manually run. So uh, the last thing that we want to do is run the script automatically uh, at a fixed interval, probably like every second or something like that, uh, every half second maybe. Um, I actually don't know how to do that, so we'll need to figure out how to do that together. Let's uh, quickly look at the script though. So the first major change that I made, the here's the material list that we filter for, and I renamed this to subtype filter because that's what we're filtering for, only on the subtype. Uh, and I changed, uh, updated the code down here um, accordingly uh, on with subtype. We're filtering for the subtype. And then the, the majority of changes I've done down here. Um, right here. So this is where we used to print or, or list. Um, so we're defining a new variable type prefix, which is this op my object builder underscore thing that we see in all the different types. And then I'm creating a dictionary. This is a little bit, um, uh, might be a little bit uh, complicated to grasp, but basically what this dictionary does, it maps from the, the material t subtype to a key value pair. Um, and I'm using a key value pair just because I need two values. I need the amount of ore and the amount of ingots. So basically this maps from for every material, how many, how much ore and how much ingots do we have? And I call this the material dictionary. Uh, and then I uh, loop over every material in the subtype filter, initialize two variables, ores and ingots, and then I create the ore key and the ingots key. So which is the type prefix, which we defined up here, the my object builder underscore, then ore colon, and then the material name. And then the same thing for the ingots key, which is the, again the type prefix plus ingot colon, and then the material name. So um, with that, I, I go and check if in the inventory dict, if we have an or key and or we have an ingots key. And if we have the or key, I store the amount of or in the ors in the or variable. So inventory dict, or key, store in the or variable, and the same thing for ingots over here. So after this, I have in the uh, or and ingots variables, I have the amount of or and ingots for this specific material. Um, that we have previously calculated in our in a loop across all the inventories. And then um, last in the last step, we uh, create a an entry in the material dict uh, where we create like a new key value pair um, and uh, I just now notice that I then go and actually I, do, I don't really I don't think I actually need this dictionary um, I could just move this up here and then print it directly if I just delete this you know let's not delete it let's comment it out in case I'm wrong right? we don't need to store this we just need to we just need to print it once we have them Right, so we can grab this here, copy, and paste in here. So, and this is not material key, this is going to be just material. 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 And then this here is going to be ingots. And this is going to be or, and I, I'll, ex I'll explain what these format amounts and whatever and these format strings here all mean in just a second. Um, if this here works, which 
pretty sure it should. I'll just make it easier. Check code. Material deck does not exist in this context. Still have it somewhere, huh? What line is that? 97. What on here? Why does it not exist? Oh, because I commented it out. That's fair. Um, so I'll just comment these out as well. Okay. So I'll check code. Yep. And then run. And of course it's not working. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. What did I do wrong? Oh, right. This needs to go in front of this loop now. The the header. Once more. There we go. That looks better. Okay. <clears throat> so, I calculate the ore key, the ingots key. I get the amount of ore and the amount of ingots for the specific material that we're looping over. And the, the order that they will be printed here, by the way, is the same order as they are defined up here. So, if you want them in a different order, just rearrange them up here. Um, so all these things that we have commented out, we can just remove now, make it a little bit more easier to read. Okay, and then, so, amount of ingots, am uh, amount of ore, amount of ingots, and then we use a format string here, um, and basically the f what this means here is the f first argument, which is material, the second argument, format amount, uh, ingots, and the third argument, or, and I'll talk about the format amount here in a second, <clears throat> but minus 10 means uh, regardless of how long the string is, I want at least this this part to take up at least 10 characters, and I want this string to be left aligned within those 10 characters. And the same thing over here. The, the 7 means I want this thing here to take up at least 7 characters, regardless of how, how big the string is. And the last one, same thing, at least seven characters, regardless of how much, how big the string is. Um, and that what, what that does is it creates this, um, yeah, remember changes. It uh, creates this padding here, right? These columns that they're like nicely aligned. So this column here is left aligned, whereas this one here is right aligned, and this one here is also right aligned. Um, I might. Actually, make the header left the the title of the columns here left aligned, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So that's what what this does. And then, so the format string, uh, uh, sorry, the format amount function that I'm using up here, uh, where are we? Yeah, format amount for or and format amount for ingots. It's defined down here. Um, so it takes in a, a f my fixed point amount and returns a string. And what I am basically here doing here, I'm just um. Uh, formatting this to use like these um, uh, G, M, K, so like for thousand uh, or a million or like a billions um, of the material, I I just I just uh, format this and return this so that we get this nice, more compact printing here, right? 178K instead of like 178 and then lot three more um, numbers. Uh, which at, at thousands is still kind of would still fit just fine, but like as we go into millions, it, it won't, and it, it it makes everything more compact and, and nicer. Um, yeah. Let's um, I I will this, the, the fact that it prints zeros every everywhere here I will not address right now. Um, I do want to wrap this up as soon as possible, and for that we still need to uh make it auto update. So. Let's get back in the script. Um, <clears throat> I know there is a way to make the main function be called multiple times. Um, and so, 
Space Engineers. Um, automatically call main or something like this. Mm -hmm. No. Update. How do you self updating? Okay. Yes. Okay, every tick and every tenth tick. Um, how often does the gip game take a hundred times per second or something? Um <laughs> Uh, space engineer, engineers update 100. Uh, uh, uh. I'm trying to figure out, uh, let's see if we can find it in the documentation here. Okay, but we can definitely already kind of set it up. So, the code, the runtime, like this code here, the runtime update frequency goes into the program block this time, not in the main block. And what this will allow us to do, so let's get the program block here first. Um, let's delete all this comment. Okay, so what this will do is basically it specifies that we want the main section of the program of the script to be run every 100 ticks let's check this okay that's good um let's run this uh i don't know how often every 100 ticks is it might be every second and i've also heard that uh edit querying the grid like this here um, as well as down here, where is it? This here. Uh, it's not recommended to be done in the actual updates because it's quite slow. I don't think I changed anything, so no. Um, so I may want to optimize that at a later point. But let's see, let's just remove some things from... Um, let's see, we have relatively little gold, so we should be able to just grab that gold into our inventory. Right. Gold. Yeah. And then if we go back here, bam, it's gone. <laughs> uh, and then if we put it back again. Come on. I have a little bit of gold left here for whatever reason. There you go. And it's back. Nice. Okay, that's awesome. Um, I will... What I will do is I, I'll fix these uh, zeros here. I'll figure out what this is. And I'll let you guys know next time what, what was going on with these zeros. Um, and I will also make sure that we have the right update frequency. Um, that we're not updating this too often. And we'll uh, only query the, the grid. And I will move the grid uh, querying out of the the regular updates um or have it do it on a on a lesser frequency um depending on what makes sense uh but yeah let's let's go over here to our little engineering plan um we have built the inventory lcd panel congratulations to us um i hope this uh kind of episode it and you were able to enjoy i know it's something different um and watching somebody write code is maybe not quite as exciting um as uh watching a time lapse of somebody uh building an actual craft or building or or mine also oh man i need to check on this this is definitely uh yeah 
this is definitely not working. It's definitely uh, uh, lowering too quickly. And I, I'll do that as well. And I'll, I'll let you guys know how I fixed it uh, in the next episode. So thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. I upload Space Engineers videos twice a week. And there's lots of other stuff to explore on the channel as well. Um, and <clears throat> please uh, check out the Discord channel. I recently set up a, a Discord server. There's a link in the description below. And let me know how you enjoyed this episode. Uh, it was a little bit different, but yeah. Uh, the comments are the place to give me all the feedback. Or just jump into the Discord server and, uh, and let me know from person to person. I'll be waiting there for you guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.